hey, my friend, Aaron Chase here, um, and I missed you last week. Uh, I'm sorry I missed you. I am um, actually at this time, um, two o'clock central time is when, on Tuesdays is when I do my Aaron Chase show live. Um, of course, we reshare it to other places, video and podcast players. Um, I was actually um, in surgery, so more on that in a second. Um, but for let's kick this off. You're watching the Aaron Chase show where we talk all things uh, intentional living and trying to find that ever elusive balance that uh, we're just we're chasing that balance in our busy and overwhelming lives. I know that my life is extra busy right now, which makes today's topic uh, super important. I am so excited to talk. We're, I'm going to geek out today. Okay. My husband geeks out over data forensics. Like I cannot even imagine what kind of geekiness happens there, but <laughs> just data, data, data is geeky, right? Uh, I'm going to, we're going to geek out over mealtime right now. So if, if, uh, I want you to pull up a chair, I'm coming at you from the kitchen today um, because of today's topic. Um, and I'm usually doing my Aaron Chase shows in my office, but I wanted to be in the kitchen today because this is a question I have for you. Are the routines and workflows that happen in and around your kitchen and in and around your dinner table working for or against you? And is there something that you could be doing differently to make the whole dinner sort of ramp up to dinner and dinner experience um, a little bit easier and smoother? And I'm gonna break down um, three layers um, that are all kind of different routines, but they all have to work together in order for things to flow well um, in your kitchen in, in your kitchen for dinner. And ultimately, I've shared this before, but I'm going to share it again, to make uh, the time with your family, the time that you get to connect with them, just such a special time. When things go wrong, when 67 things go wrong leading up to dinner, is your dinner experience very pleasant? No, it's not. Um, at least not for me. Um, so we're going to geek out over this. And of course, because I love to talk about food and I'm a big analogy nerd, um, I'm going to share this layer as if it were a piece of pie, um, because in every Aaron Chase show, we talk about pie as the, my acronym for intentional living, which we will get there in a minute. But I'm also going to have a second pie for you in this episode. This pie is going to be the mealtime workflows and routines that we're going to dig into. Um, so the crust is going to be the foundation. The yummy filling is going to be the second layer. Um, and the third is going to be whether it's a lattice top to your pie or whipped cream or ice, a dollop of ice cream, a mess of dollop of ice cream, whatever it is. But I want you to think foundation, middle, topping. Okay. And here's, here are those three things. Um, the first routine that you need to consider when it comes to mealtime is actually um, the physical things in your kitchen. So dishes, plates, cookware, utensils, pots and pans, all the things. Um, and I know, especially the last couple of um, months, 18, 15, how, how long have we been doing this pandemic thing? Um, there have been, this got way out of control at my house and I'm sure it did at your house. The dishes were running, we're running the dishwasher two and three times a day, plus the hand washing and all the things going on just with eating at home. But it's actually starting to smooth out a little bit and we're kind of back down to our once, maybe twice a day sort of routine. Um, but we're gonna talk about the dishes and the plates um, flow as being the foundation. Because if you don't have those things on the ready, then it, when it comes time to cook or set the table, then you can't find things and things just get out of whack and out of line and then you're that's one of two, three, four, five, seven, 17 things that'll go wrong just with the dishes and the cookware. So I want you to think about the physical uh, plates part as the foundation. The second workflow is the food, right? And this goes everything from what's in the freezer, what's in the pantry, what, you know, having all the ingredients that you need. And then of course the actual cooking routine and then, you know, getting that onto the table. Okay, so that's the yummy filling. So the crust is the dishes and the cookware. The yummy filling is the actual food you're gonna eat. How about that? Um, and then the topping is gonna be kind of the after dinner experience and like the workflow around the cleanup because it's inevitable. I um, mean, I think these three things are really important and they really need to work together um, in order for you to have these sort of smooth dinner time experiences. Okay, Does, I, hope, I hope I'm articulating this 
um, well of these kind of three layers. Um, okay, so the dishes and the plates flow. Um, I'm really just, I, I want you just to be thinking, okay, should I be running the dishwasher at a different time of day? If you don't have a dishwasher, um, what could I do differently um, whenever it's time to, you know, hand wash the dishes or whatever? How can we work together as a family to do that? At, at our house, dishes is full on family affair. Everybody's involved. Um, I'm the least involved because I do most of the cooking part, but that's just how we work around here. Um, I want you to be thinking about what, you know, what could you do differently? Do you need to run the dishwasher after the morning rush? Um, do you need to, can, do you not have enough and you can wait until after the dinner rush? Do you need to run it, you know, after breakfast and lunch? So maybe afternoon and then run it again after dinner. It's obviously going to depend on the volume of actual dishes that you need to be washing. But I want you to think about the end goal of the dishes being ready when you need them. Okay. So that's, the foundational layer. Like when you need the dishes ready, they need to be ready for you. So for us, it's generally an after, uh, after breakfast run, um, with hand washing of any skillets that we might've used for eggs or something like that. So that we have the skillet. I have a favorite skillet and a favorite burner. I know that's one of the funniest names that we have. Um, it's a thing front, right for me. What is it for you? Okay. <laughs> Sidetracked there. Um, but I, so all that to say is, I think that when it comes to dinner prep, we think, okay, here's the food part of this. And here's the, you know, getting it to the table part. And we probably have a pretty good grasp on the cleanup part of it as well. But is the cookware part in the dishes part is maybe one that's not working so well for you. So I want you to think about that and when, what, what you could try to have everything ready when you need it. So that's the foundational layer. All right. Second is the food, the yummy, delicious filling. So this, there's so many different ways to do dinner, right? And, you know, for, for me, it's about affordability. It's about health. It's about speed. Um, and so there's lots of different uh, types of meals that end up on our meal plan. Um, and I think that's just to try to help me keep up with all of the things that are going on um, and all the different types of of meals that we like to eat. And so uh, there are certain days of the week that I need freezer meals. So that's easy, a, a fast, easy and affordable way um, to do a dinner. Um, that are, Those are dinners that are gonna most likely cook themselves. You've done the, the prep work. Um, we recommend doing 10 meals at a time. We've done the prep work. So then it'll, you know, pop it in the oven, thaw it out to put it on the grill, uh, put it right into the slow cooker or the instant pot from frozen. I've shared all of that with you um, in previous videos. And if you're new here, go explore on the videos tab. You'll, you'll find, you'll find those things. Um, but the, I think the idea is to be thinking about you know, what do you, what type of meal do you need on whatever type of day you either know you're going to have, whether your schedule calls for craziness in the afternoon or having backup for when things throw you off, uh, life throws you off because that absolutely happens in your mood too. Like when you just don't feel like cooking default to breakfast for dinner, because most likely you have ingredients for breakfast for dinner, whether you're getting out the, the griddle and you're making pancakes from scratch because you have, you know, basic baking supplies in your, in your pantry, right? Like there's things that you could do, um, when you need a backup. Um, I know around here, the kids will make pancakes. Sometimes that ends up being a fun breakfast for dinner. They'll make pancakes and then throw a couple things of bacon on. And then we've got just this super easy, fast dinner that they prepared, whether that was me not being in the mood or just that was what was on the menu um, tonight. So be thinking about, um, are the meals that you're, this is the question for this layer is, are the meals that you're making working for you when it comes to your schedule, your mood, life throwing things your way in the middle of the afternoon that you weren't planning on, whatever it may be, right? Um, so I want you to think about that when it comes to this sort of middle layer of how the food is flowing through your kitchen. Of course, it's important to have staples on hand, pantry staples. I like to keep things in my freezer, both freezer meals, as well as, you know, pre browned ground beef, pre-cooked um, shredded chicken. Um, sometimes I'll get like chicken breasts and chicken thighs, put them all in the slow cooker, uh, you know, several pounds worth of each, put it all in the slow cooker, maybe with a little broth or a little seasoning, let it all cook together. Once it's cooked, shred it all up. And then I have, you know, filling for um, enchiladas or a pasta bake or something like that. Just having, a, I call that a meal starter. So having a meal starter ready to go makes that food flow 
um, just a little bit easier and a little faster and ultimately keeps you out of, you know, the drive through and calling for takeout and DoorDash and things like that. Um, so that's food flow, thinking about that. And then of course the cleanup. So the last, the top, the top of the pie, the lattice or the, the whipped cream or the ice cream in my analogy, the top of that is going to be the cleanup. What happens after dinner, uh, getting your kitchen back to the state that you want it to be in. And I think, I know for me and what I would recommend for you is having your kitchen like fully cleaned up, ready to go dishwasher running overnight, you know, wh whatever your, uh, you know, dishes flow ends up being so that when you wake up in the morning, you have this blank, clean slate, a uh, blank canvas. Sometimes I will, I will call it that so that you can just get right back to cooking, right? There's so much that happens in our kitchens, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, plus snacks, plus homework, plus who knows, pro projects. Oh my word. The school projects that we end up doing in here, like it's just a constant, like all the things happening in here all the time. And so I think it's really important to set yourself up for success the next day, you know, along this sort of intentional um, living and intentional journey that that I know I'm on and, and you are probably as well, is keeping yourself set up for success. And I think that the after dinner cleanup, um, if for us it's a full on crew situation, everybody's involved, everybody's helping, everybody's got a job. Um, and, and ultimately at the very end, I will come through and make sure that everything is where it is so that it very much looks like what's behind me. It's just kind of all put away, all blank and ready to go so that when everybody comes down into the kitchen and starts on breakfast, everybody has kind of their own little breakfast thing happening around here in the morning. It's early, 6.15, 6.30, somebody's showing up in the kitchen and, and getting going. And so if this was a mess when we started, hmm, okay, so <laughs> we got to get it all nice and cleaned up. And I think uh, the reason I wanted to share these sort of three layers is because it's really important for all three of these things to kind of flow together um, in order for uh, there to be that sort of dinnertime success. And ultimately, um, that's what it's all about. It's about setting yourself up for success, you know, running your dishes once or twice a day, overnight, unloading first thing in the morning or after the breakfast rush as you load, you know, so you can load in the breakfast dishes, things like that. Um, the second is what is your, what is your, your dinner flow look like compared to your schedule and making a plan based on that. I have these two, um, fabulous meal planners that we have in our store. These are both tear pads. They're both magnetic. They're in their packaging. So that's why they're kind of crinkly sounding. Um, one of them is a shopping list with a grocery, um, with a menu plan and budget. That's this one. And then this one is just what you're having for dinner. Uh, throughout this next week and both of the any kind of planning these are just two of our most popular downloads and printables that I transformed into a tear pad that we will mail you um, but any type of plan is what's going to be important and if you can get into the you know make it a habit to plan based on your schedule slash mood slash have options for a crisis you are setting yourself up for massive massive success and then of course, um, the cleanup is, you know, divide and conquer and get your kind of blank canvas ready to go for the next day. So those are the three layers that I want you to think about when it comes to routines and workflows around mealtime. I did share about morning routine. This month is all about routines here on the Aaron Chase show. I did share about morning routines two weeks ago. Oh my gosh, that feels like yesterday. <laughs> the last little bit has been a blur. Um, after this little procedure, uh, the, uh, next week we're going to talk about evening routines and some business routines that I think are really important for setting yourself up for success um, as well. But for today, when it comes to mealtime routines and being in the kitchen and, and the dinner time and all of that, I want you to think this is, it might sound a little bit strange. Sometimes when I say this in a, in a workshop where, you know, I can see your reaction, <laughs> people are like, what is she talking about? But let me say it anyways. I want you to think about your kitchen as if it were a restaurant kitchen. Now, I don't want you, I don't want it to become sort of this sterile space. Your kitchen is obviously the heart and hub of your home. Um, but in order for it to, you know, to create that sort of peace, I feel like there's got to be order. Um, and so all of these things, that's which is why I'm sharing all of these things, these layers, the, the, the dishes layer, the food layer, the cleanup layer, I think they're all super crucial for, um, again, setting yourself for, up for success and getting into these workflows. Um, if you've ever worked in a restaurant, there's, there's rules, like just, just do, create that in your own kitchen. Um, you know, again, not in sort of a, you know, sterile, 
uh, sort of way, but not to say a commercial kitchen sterile because it's not. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want you to think about that kind of structure. This, this, this is what I'm going. Sterile is totally the wrong word. Ignore all that. I want you to think about the structure and the procedures and the processes and where everything goes and all of those things that happens in a commercial kitchen. I want you to think about that in your home. I got ahead of myself. It's think, feel, take action. We, we share that um, in every episode. We have pie. I've already shared the analogy for pie. I got way ahead of myself there. Sorry. Uh, so I want you to pick one of these areas. So let's, let's go back. Rewind. Rewind two minutes. This is the risk of live video. Uh, I want you to go, let's go back to PI really quick. So plan, implement, evaluate is my acronym for intentional living. It's PI and it's all about planning something and then implementing it and then evaluating and see how it went so you can make adjustments or tweak things. So when it comes to the mealtime routines that we're chatting about today, I want you to pick one of these areas to, to try and smooth out. So whether it's the dishes and the cookware layer or the, the food layer or the cleaning Pick one of those and then make a plan for what you could try differently and then try that the next couple of days, weeks, and then see how it goes. Evaluate it. Is this working? Did we, did we find all of a sudden the magic flow for the dishes or, you know, just switching out the time you run the dishwasher, like whatever that simple thing might be. Um, think simple, but think what's going to have the biggest impact and make the best, biggest difference for you, um, in and around your kitchen. Okay. So that's pie again. I want you to, so think, feel, take action is how you get results in your life and how they stick. So it's how you think about something, how, then, which determines how you feel about it, which determines the actions that you're going to take, which then gets you the results that you're looking for. And if we are looking for a happier, more fun, less angsty, I've got a lot of teenagers around here, so sometimes we get angsty. Um, <laughs> dinner time experience with toddlers too. Dinner time experience. Then this is this is what I want you to think. I want you to again think like a restaurant manager. This is what I was saying a second ago. Think like uh, think of the structure, build in the structure that you would think would be if you've never worked in a restaurant kitchen, or if if you have, then you know. Um, think about the structure and the processes and the procedures that are inside of a restaurant kitchen, and apply that into your home kitchen you know, of course, with love and grace, a whole lot of love and grace mixed in there. Um, but the, when those three layers are working well, when the dishes are working right and you the food's working right and the cleanup's working right, there's just less angst. There just is. Um, okay. I want you to feel like things that are moving in and around your kitchen are like a well-oiled machine. So I want you to feel, and then of course the take action part, uh, I've, I've given you this challenge already, but pick one of these the dishes, cookware, the dinner, or the cleanup, and try and make it better. Um, that's the take action uh, part of that. If dinner and planning is a, a struggle for you, then highly recommend uh, one of these. I've got these two. We took our two most popular meal plan printables, and I turned them into tear pads. They're both magnetic, so you can put them onto your fridge and get them going. Um, and making the matching up the food flow in your kitchen to what actually needs to happen based on your schedule and your mood and just whatever might be happening in your life um, these days. So that's my challenge for you. So that brings us to the end of this episode of the Aaron Chase Show Live. Um, of course, we share this video, the replay of this. We'll still continue to live here on Facebook. We also share it to YouTube. You can go watch old episodes there. And we also upload the audio version of this to all of the different podcast players. So if you do a lot of driving like I do, um, I love listening to podcasts, especially ones that are practical and kind of tactical, like we like we like to do around here. Um, this would be a great uh, one to listen to in the car. You can just subscribe um, to The Aaron Chase Show. Wherever you're listening or watching, uh, you can do that. We're live on Facebook here Tuesdays every after every Tuesday afternoon at two uh, central standard time. And then of course the podcasts and videos, I, I believe those get uploaded. The replays get uploaded on Friday. So that's all I got for you this week, my friend, go back and listen to the morning routines. And next Tuesday, I'll be here to share with you about evening routines and a little bit of work routines probably mixed into that as well. So that's it for this episode, my friend. It's bye for now. And we'll talk again soon.